Hi. This week I thought it would be fun to show you how I go from beginning to end rather than breaking it down into pieces just show you the whole thing from start to finish. So uh, today's subject is an anhinga which are commonly found all across the state of Florida. They are probably the most common bird that I see around and you'll always see them perched right by the banks of water, any kind of body of water, they'll be there. And most of the time they just sit in sun. You don't normally see them wading in the water. They're normally a uh, dive and snatch kind of bird. Um, and after they've caught their food, they go right back to the bank and you'll see them stretch out their arms, their wings, open wide and dry off and sun for long periods of time. So uh, like I said for today uh, I'm going to be painting an anhinga from start to finish and so here we go. So to start off I want to get the basic shapes down and so I'm just going to do a quick loose sketch. Um, I'm doing it on a layer that's above the the background so that if I need to erase I don't take the background with it. And I like to start on a mid-tone canvas which has been a big tip from the artists that I uh, follow and admire. Um, when you work with a mid-tone to start you have places to go in either direction, either lighter or darker. Whereas if you start with a white canvas, you can't get any brighter than white. And so you have to be really creative with how you display light or even use the background itself in order for the lightest lights to shine through. You have to spend a lot of time compensating on those white backgrounds because if nothing is brighter than white, then everything you paint will be darker. So getting back to the image here. Let's go ahead and get some basic drawing in. So, not trying to be perfect. And this one's going to be a close up. I haven't drawn a close-up in a while. So really I'm just working out the angles of the facial features, being very loose. I'll tie this down as I paint. And this one in particular His feathers were definitely influenced by the wind. And he's looking at us from the back. And so this is his shoulder. This is his other wing there. Let's go ahead and get the basic basic head shape in here. Probably let's see. Give it an angle like that. And I might even move this. in just a little bit more so I can get more of that shoulder on that side. Just a little bit more. So something I'm going to do is I'm going to make quick marks indicating the direction of certain feathers on this particular part and where they get smaller 
and how they transition to bigger ones. Same for this side. These are more like notes. If I was, you know, if you're taking a, a lecture and you're listening to your professor speak about whatever the topic is, they usually go a lot faster than you can write. So what do you do? You do a shorthand, right, to get the basic notes down. And something I would tell my students when they would take notes when I was a teacher is that, you know, your notes are for you. They're not for me. So you should take notes in whatever way makes sense to you later. If you were to put it down and come back to it three months from now, you'd still be able to understand them. Those are good notes. So whatever sketching I do here, I just need to make sure that my lines convey the right kind of shapes, that I'm getting the right overall idea of the structure of the anhinga. That way when I look at my sketch later, if I, if I were to come back to it, I would remember what I was going for. So certain things that I want to make sure I emphasize are any areas that are darker or lighter, hard shape changes, areas of complete shadow, details where the the eye might be positioned where I want the eye to be perceived to be looking. Because remember when you're drawing and painting, it's not the actual animal. So everything that you're doing is alluding to a particular position or, or placement of something. And something else to keep in mind is that if there's, if you're tied down too much to your photo evident, uh, reference, your photo reference, uh, you don't have any wiggle room, well, then if you need to make a change in order to make the image more appealing, more dramatic, more stylized, whatever it is, if you're too tied down to the photo, you limit your ability to do that. Something I strive for when I paint is to get a, the image across that you know what you're looking at, but you also know that it's a painting, even if it's got realistic qualities to it. I never want anyone who looks at my art to think it was a photograph. That's not why I paint. It can be similar to a photograph in that it has realistic qualities. Realism is fine, but I don't want it to be a complete photographic representation. And I'm doing this all in real time. This is not sped up. Now I know that the feathers here on the main part of the body are dark. So rather than filling that in at this moment, I'll save time and I'm just gonna indicate where that plane changes, where we start to see more of the light colored feathers. That's what I'm gonna make note of. And remember, a lot of this is going to be painted over anyway, so it's okay if my sketch is messy or not perfect. I'm not aiming for perfect at this stage. That's for refinement. Okay, I'm 
got these lighter colored feathers back here. Darker ones back over there. And I'm just going to straighten the beak just a little bit more. I don't want to misrepresent what I'm seeing. widens, comes back into here, and continues a bit. Okay, um, the next thing I'm going to do is indicate the rough shapes for the background. So there are some plants, some foliage up over this way. So I'm just going to indicate that. And then that this side is the dark side. We got a leaf over here. This side's the dark side with a little bit of shape there. More leaves this way. Got another one going across like that. One coming down or going up, it's hard to tell. I think it's coming down. And some more shapes there. Just roughly indicate some other plants and lines and things over there. Now I'm going to get some of the bigger branches that come up and go off this way. Uh, that's a little too close to the end of that peak. I don't want to create anything that resembles a tangent. I'll give this one a little bit more of an angle. something like that. Then we have a bigger branch kind of does this. Add some depth to this branch, some thickness to this one as well. And now I'm just going to be really loose. So we've got plants coming off of there.
trying not to get to uh, too distracted by some of the the plants. I need to really keep it loose because the background is not going to be the focal point. So let's just go ahead and make some really rough shapes. I'll have them overlap so that they take up more space. Have them go in different directions. We can decide later which ones we like, which ones we want to keep, which ones are going to ultimately end up getting painted over or turned into negative space. Actually, I'm going to turn this one into a focal point. So this is going to come off of this branch and aim right back to the eye. All right. So this is the, the rough sketch stage. Now what I'm going to do is add another layer. I'm going to go beneath it. I'm going to lower the opacity on the sketch layer. And then I'm going to start painting in my values. So we'll start off with some of the darker areas, not the fully dark. definitely dark. And I'm just using right now in Photoshop the hard round brush. I have it set to a low opacity. I might move it up to 40 or 39, somewhere around there. And I have the flow turned way down. And what this will let me do is it'll let me iterate or conceptualize the, the areas a little bit better. It'll blend instead of being that really hard edge there. So it functions a little bit more like a, a soft piece of charcoal. Now, something else I, I can do, how about I go ahead and stop this. Um, let me get rid of this layer, or I'll hide it. I'll hide that layer, and then I'll show you a trick that we can do that will make this a whole lot easier to play around with. So, if you go into the lasso tool, the lasso tool allows you to create a customized selection. So any shape that you'd like to trace, you can create. And then if we have that selection, we can fill the contents inside with whatever color fill we want. It'll be a flat color if we use the paint bucket. And then we can make a selection mask that will let us paint only inside of our selection. So go ahead and start here and it doesn't need to be perfect Oop. try again the key is to not let go
Okay. And so now I can go to my paint bucket. I can grab that tone that I was using before and I can fill that shape. I can always clean it up later. But what this will allow me to do now is paint directly inside of this layer. And I'll go ahead to a new layer just so I don't mess up my silhouette yet. And this is already selected. So if I if I start painting, watch what happens. I'll grab a lighter color so you can see. If I start painting here, notice how it only stays inside the shape. It doesn't leave this bounding box. So that's really helpful. Now, if you're really distracted by these uh, marching ants, is what we call a selection line that dances around. Uh, if you hold down Control H on a PC or Command H, I believe, on a Mac, uh, the selection mask is still there, but it hides. H is for hide the selection. So it's still active, and it doesn't matter how many layers I add on top as long as I still have that selection selected. It's fine. And then at any point, if I, you know, go through and I click uh, select and deselect, right, watch what happens. This is now not selected anymore. Now it's going to paint outside that line. And so we get all this unwanted painting. So what can you do if you accidentally click out of it? Well, if you hold down control or command, and you click on the thumbnail of your paint fill, it will bring that selection mask back. This is probably the easiest way that I've learned to do mask selection. Um, I learned it from Bobby Chu in his videos. And I think it's a whole lot easier than trying to make other types of masks work. I get so confused with which layer needs to be where and when and all that kind of stuff. So for me, this is the easiest way to go about it. And it's really helped my painting improve.